Hey everyone, it's us again from Soulbound Studios. Uh, today we are joining you so that we can do another live Q&A. This time our topic is going to be on tribes. Uh, we had so many tribes, we have 12 tribes in Chronicles of Illyria, that we felt like there was just far too many questions and too much information to tell you guys in a single Q&A. Uh, as you'll see from reading over multiple write-ups now, that while each of the tribes are unique, they have their own biome, they have their own food supply, they have all these different things that are unique to their own, their own religions and cultural beliefs and their own societies and, and how they structure the, the the language and schools and military they're all different we follow the same approach for all of them and so if people focus their questions kind of on general then we'll be able to answer them directly if you dig into the individual details of the tribes that's great uh, specifically the tribes that we are talking about today that being the Naren, the hrothi and the broodvir not to mention the approach to tribes in general we've we've alluded to it a couple of times in q a's past but might not have watched those or we can go into a lot more detail. Joining me today as usual I've got Miguel Sozo Sierra on here on my left, our technical designer and world builder. On my right I have Vi, uh, just leave it at Vi. That's fine. Vi, our uh, senior producer uh, who's uh, I guess director of production. Yeah. All right cool. Um, so <laughs> it's good. What about me? Uh, and we've got Jeremy Caspian Walsh, CEO, creative director, technical director, yeah. businessman extraordinaire, all around cool guy. You didn't dance, that was the whole point. There we go. All right. We are, as you know, procedurally generating the world uh, and the continent uh, is going to be at different latitudes depending upon the, the server. And so some of them may end up being more uh, polar latitudes, either top or bottom, in which case it's likely to have the colder climates uh, and less likely to have the tropical climates, whereas others are likely to be central, in which case they're more likely to have the tropical, like the Madari, but are less likely to have the Yoru or maybe even the Broodvir. So not all the servers are going to start on that continent with all the tribes, however all the servers will be exposed to all the tribes. So through exploration and discovery you will get a chance to meet all of them. At this point, no, no. Tribes do not affect your likelihood of receiving a talent. Short answer is yes. Uh, predisposition for different types of crafting professions as well as the biome that you're in will dictate how much fatigue you lose. Um, in some cases, I think we've already shown that in the case of, was it the Broodvir or the Hrothi? One of them, there's the acclimation to climate. The Broodvir are accl acclimated to colder climates right. and so they lose less fatigue when in the colder environments right. than the Hrothi and the Naren do. Right. So. Yes. I would say yes. Well, right. even if we didn't set up the system of inheriting, just the exposure you have around them as you play right. is going to cause your character to pick up those languages right. much quicker. Right. It's also going to be a function of your character's mental stats, because right. not all not all tribes are better are very good at learning multiple languages. Right. Some are better than others, like the Madari, for example, are right. very good at learning multiple languages. They're oh fantastic. Spoilers. 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 Got to give them something to look forward to. <laughs> One of the things we did with this is we really wanted to create uh, social groups beyond the individual kingdoms and the tribes that were populating those kingdoms. Uh, and so in many cases there are overlaps. For example, the Hrothi and the, the Naren both speak Naren. However, the Hrothi also speak Northerner, which is a language that they share with the Broodvir and the Yoru. So if you were, as a Naren, to go inside of the Hrothi environment, depending upon whether or not they were writing in Naren or, or Northerner would dictate whether or not you can actually read that language, which I think is fascinating because it means that you can walk into an area and actually feel like you don't know what's going on. You can kind of feel lost, or you might need to find somebody who speaks a language with you, uh, which I think is awesome. And the further you south you go, the more tropical, the more the tribes tend to be isolated. Uh, the Dross, for example, uh, are, are fairly isolated in, in the sense that they have, have former relations with the other tribes around them, but they don't necessarily interact with them as much. And so it becomes more difficult to talk to people uh, as you go further south without having to be a part of one of those tribes or finding a translator. Like the tropical, the wetlander language and the tropical languages are fairly exclusive. Right. I think the tropical language is only shared between the Dross and the Genoa. Right. And the Midari now. And the Midari. And the Midari. So and the old language though. Right. No one speaks. No one speaks the own language but the own. Uh, that information is lost to time. If there was ever a thirteenth tribe or. Or anything else? With the 12 tribes, part of it came from the, the science of the biomes. We had about 20, 20 biomes and we looked at them, we distilled them down to the ones that we felt like had conditions that were unique enough that they would warrant uh, their own tribe. And so on the starting continent, we, we settled on a, about 12. That being said, was it 11 or 13? Uh, it could have probably 
there was some room there for flexibility, but ultimately I chose 12 uh, as a parallel to uh, the 12 tribes in our world. I will just leave that as a religious reference so that people can, can look that up on their own. The tribes are an interesting one. We knew from the beginning how we wanted them to work, but we didn't know for sure how different we wanted them to be. Um, when we first kind of created and we imagined them all much more like Naren, and then as we went along, as we went along, they became a little bit more unique, and we wanted to move them a little more into the high fantasy, uh, and so that caused them to evolve a little bit differently. Though we always knew we wanted them to be more evolved to their biomes than, than humans are in our world. Um, but we have this kind of promise that we made to the community, the people who had backed us at, a, at an early level, to make sure that they have this, this social structure of a, a king, duke, and count-like structure, regardless of which, which tribe that they choose. And so to kind of make sure that we adhere to that promise, all of the tribes are going to reflect a similar social structure. They just might have different words for it and other things. Um, the one thing that we did do differently, though, is when there's a power vacuum and that there's no direct heir, meaning who is the king or the duke or the count in that region next is in no way based on the person who was there previously, that it was based on popularity and reputation. And we really liked that idea, but we felt like that was a very Naren type thing. And so as we've been developing these other tribes, we've been looking for other ways to allow the tribes to solve the problem of who's gonna be the next leader in the region based on their specific kind of sociology. Oh, yes. And so uh, if you've read the, the journals now, you know that the, the Harathi view age and wisdom as a very core to their culture. And so the oldest member of their, their tribe within that bracket, so for example, if it's the, the Shield King, then among the different dukes, the oldest is automatically the one that gets the Casa Spell and, and the ability to claim the throne. Uh, in the case of the Broodvir, they are very prone towards uh, leadership. And so it's just whoever has the highest leadership trait. Right. And all the tribes will be different, as best we can make them. At this point, they're planning. we plan for them to all be different. Yes, okay. all, all of that already exists, but they're not necessarily mechanics that are enforced. Might be a good use for people's design experiences. It's possible. Yeah. World story event type stuff. And well, and with the mechanics that are present, it's not to say that a population could by the design of the players and through the interactions of the players choose to have something yeah. uh, occur, become a, a phobia, like all frothy become afraid of water or something like that. And that's just something that people choose to do. And then it could also be adopted as a mechanic. In the cases where we do need to group or cluster the, the different tribes into a single kingdom in order to make sure we can get enough tribes on the starting server, we will pair them in such a way that there are not internal conflicts. Uh, we talked about potentially pairing, for example, the Broodvir and Harathi, which uh, share, share a similar culture even though they have different religions. Uh, we have the opportunity to share the, the Harathi and the Naren, uh, the Naren and the Kippic, and then as, as we go south there are other alliances that we can set up. The advantages and disadvantages of, the, of leaving the biome that you were uh, kind of is your primary biome are, are the advantage, some of the advantages and disadvantages you see on the write-ups we do. So for example, uh, the, the Broodvir are specifically suited towards being inside of a cooler climate. Uh, if they leave that cooler climate, they lose that advantage, and so inherently then they kind of have a disadvantage now in the other ones. Uh, similarly, there are going to be, as we talk about the desert tribes, the inability to survive uh, as effectively in areas of high humidity. Uh, and so if they do travel into those areas, it's, they're going to lose fatigue more quickly or they're going to lose energy more quickly because they're in a more humid environment. Similarly, we've got the Broodvir up in the Alpine forest, uh, kind of in the taiga, which in many cases has uh, lower, the higher altitude comes with lower oxygen. So many of the tribes that go up there will find that they can't reach the highest peaks and, and potentially even the highest areas of the Broodvir settlements. Yes, you can. Uh, there are passive skill bonuses that people get from being inside of certain regions, uh, and over the course of a lifetime, those things can start to degrade. So it's not necessarily just tied to your bloodline, but uh, is, a, is, a, is kind of a multiplier. So the longer you're in a biome that you weren't initially part of, the less the penalties are on those things. If you have a, a king, he may have more than one tribe that his people are made of, but those are going to be divided up at the very least among, along duchy boundaries. And so you might have a duke that's a member of one tribe and a duke that's another, a member, a member of a different tribe, and then within their duchy there are going to be different counties. But in general, the biomes are divided up along duchy boundaries, and so generally you're not going to have mixed tribes like that that you have to worry about that are coming from the same biome. That's not to say you won't have citizens of both tribes in a single duchy, but it's not the, the native biome for that tribe. 
N no, there's not a single language which is known everywhere. There's no like. There's no English. There's no English. There's no common. The closest we have is Naren, which is the most widely spoken language. But there are regions, there are tribes where they do not speak Naren. Right. Like most of the tropical, like the the Genoa, for example, do not speak Naren. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Make That's, our animators work. So remember, yeah, remember when I told you the animators <laughs> wanted only like two tribes? Now you know why. It works exactly like you would expect it to, which is to say that the, the people who speak Naren don't talk Naren to the, for example, the Genoa. Uh, they have no way to relate. So if you want to speak with them, you either need to learn one of the languages, such as learning the tropical language, or you need to find a mediator, uh, which also means that in general, the NPCs do not talk, talk across cultural boundaries. It's not to say that they can't, but it's not something that's commonly done. In our world, in our world, uh, we are not a fan of this. We feel like that this type of conflict does not do well for us as a people, uh, us as a society, nor just as a planet. But in a game like this, where you want conflict because it adds to story, uh, in-game racism right. between the tribes is actually interesting. And so the ability to create contracts which are only catered to or only allowed to a specific tribe, like, I'm sorry, our, our brood fear do not sign contracts with the Kippic. Right. Stuff like that, it adds for really interesting role play opportunities and also interesting mechanics in the game. But we want, we want to be clear that while that's something that we want to do in the game for, for story purposes, it's not a, a principle that we would subscribe to in real life. It's a cultural thing. It's how do the different tribes handle different types of activities. You know, is stealing from uh, the Broodvere handled the same as stealing from a different tribe? And the kingdom's laws trump anything else. However, the people who are making those laws are going to be culturally driven. And so they're going to make laws that I think favor their one culture over another. And as long as the, the contract system allows you to target one culture or one tribe versus another, then it unlocks the possibility for them to do those things. But I think it's important to recognize that the cultural stuff is some RP, some bloodline based, and, and some history, but it ultimately comes down to player mechanics. And in this case, the player mechanics are still going to have to be around the kingdom and legal system, the implicit laws. Yeah. Yeah, but not for the reason that you guys are thinking. It actually has more to do with the fact that the smallest race happens to also be the most agile race. Yes. Yeah. But not just because they're... Not just because they're, they're small. Little, right. Their tiny hands help, though, certainly. In most MMOs, you see a sword, and whomever picks it up, whatever size they are, it resizes itself yeah. to that person to be a sword for them. Uh, but our plan is not that. No. If you take a look at the Harathi, for example, they comment that they won't be able to use larger mounts, and there's equipment limitations. So things that are too large for you, uh, you're, you're just not going to be able to use effectively. We were talking yesterday about uh, adding in specific animations for trying to use things that are too large for you so that it looks like you're still trying to, but it's ultimately ineffective. It comes back to the way that items per persist in the world. When you have crafted something and it is yay big, it remains that big no matter who is holding it right. or not holding it. Right. Yes, exposure is a perfectly acceptable way to learn a language. It's how we learn languages in reality. And yes, you could absolutely learn all the languages. Uh, I think that it's important to say that knowing all of the languages is totally achievable, but it would be something that you would need to spend time to work at. It yeah. wouldn't just be a passive uh, occurrence of just living one lifetime uh, on, on a character, you wouldn't, without specifically learning the languages, you wouldn't learn them. Right. It's also important to note that language is character specific. So your ability to learn languages and your ability to understand them does accelerate as part of the skill ramp, but that's one of those things that reset. So if you start as a character, you're going to know the language of your starting tribe, and then it's going to take you some time and energy to go learn the languages of some of the other tribes. And then if you are able to complete that mission before your character dies, then I mean, you have to start over to a degree when you move on to the next life. It's still going to allow you to do it faster, but I, I think trying to learn all the languages uh, it would be a multiple lifetime endeavor because there are... How many do we have right now? Like six, seven different languages? Six or seven. Yeah. There's quite a few languages, so. That's gonna sort of depend on the tribe. Some of the tribes will be a lot more tolerant of mixed breeds than others. Right. Others will be very, you know, pure blood only. It will depend pr primarily on their society and then a little bit on how you end up making your character look, you know, which, which edge of the spectrum that you tend towards, you might be able to swing in under the radar.
of a tribe that would normally be relatively intolerant and still be treated well. Uh, he looks blue fear. He kind of looks blue fear, yeah. <laughs> I think it's okay. <laughs> There's no particular difference. The only difference that you're going to find is when there are massive differences in size. You know, an animal might react differently to a Yoro than they would a Kipik, but like you're talking someone like five foot five to six foot five, people, they're gonna basically react the same, I would say, and unless there are uh, some familiarity with that race of people as a result of constant exposure. It'll affect what you can build, but that ties into the resources that the environment provides you, um, and that's the limitation. And then also the like, the blueprints and and um, the patterns and architectural like that. patterns that are provided or available are going to be limited based on your tribe. You know, one tribe will have different blueprints than another. Right, like certainly the, the Naren have uh, access to wood and stone. The Brood Bear also have access and are particularly adept at carpentry, and so they have wood, and the Profi have a lot of stone. And so you could, in a Naren community, choose something that kind of looks very Naren, or you could find a pattern that you've think is cool and make it look a little bit more food beer like or trophy like right there's certainly a concept of like a narin door versus a brood beer door versus a right. they all have their door. own aesthetic and a kipic door i mean they're much smaller yeah it's not a pure limitation so much as it's a historical limitation so you know the narin pass along their architectural blueprints from one generation to the next and they train people and the same is true for the brood beer with their carpentry and their particular style and the hrothi in particular with all the, the triangles and circles and dome type stuff they have for for um, structural integrity like that's something they've passed along so when you're starting a character if you like that architectural style or if you're particularly wanting to use that architectural style you either want to start in that tribe or find a trainer or a crafter who knows that style because they're more likely to have the patterns and blueprints for that. Uh, so it was not uncommon, for example, for the Harathi to come into the Naren lands to help them build out things out of stone because they were better stone rites than, than the Naren were. And so oftentimes you'll see uh, cathedrals and other things that were built by the, the Broodvir, or excuse me, by the Harathi and not by the Naren. The mechanics that we have right now uh, allow for us to age them in, at different rates with respect to how they change visually, but either way they're going to live the same amount of time. He's gonna that. have a much bigger house. Yeah, the <laughs> Just... ar the architect the architecture is is going to of course be informed by the resources and the blueprints you have. So even if you're a broodvir, if you don't have any architects or any architectural blueprints of broodvir housing, you're not gonna have a broodvir house. And that's just that's it. Yeah, it's as it simple really, as that. It, much like crafting a thing, if it's this big, it's this big. If you take a pattern of a particular architecture style and you put it somewhere, it will look like that, provided that the materials can support that structure. But other yep. than that, yeah, you could just have a healthy style house in like a, a, a broadly forest place or something, yeah. and yeah. This sounds like a perfect use for the research and technology system. Right, this, yeah. this is research and technology. Yeah. Hint, hint. There will be certain restrictions and limitations that you'll have to work around. However, if you wish to solve those restrictions and limitations, there are ways to go about doing that. That is for you as the players to overcome. Yes. Like One of the whole points of Chronicles of Valyria is for the players to be part of the story and to build towards things that they want. Each server is going to diverge both in the technology they have and the the delineation of the tribes they have. I mean, the maps we've already said are going to be different, and there's going to be a different set of tribes on each server. The the map and which tribes are available on NA West is going to be different than NA East. You know what it sounds like we're doing? What? It sounds like we're creating some massive social experiment just to see which server manages to survive the apocalypse. It is a massive you. social experiment, and we <laughs> want to see what you guys do. We're going to be calling that out when we do the write-ups, but that's different than any other game that I'm aware of. You know, generally when you're partying with a group of people, you want to all move along at the same pace. And we recognize that a lot of people are going to be using mounts such as horses and stuff like that in order to allow them to move at a similar pace. But on foot, the tribes travel at different speeds. And so if you're just wandering along uh, and you are a taller tribe uh, or a more athletic tribe, you'll walk faster than one of the smaller ones, like the Hrathi, which I think at this point are probably the, the slowest movers. They're certainly one of them. Yeah. I mean, they're just, 
they're not accustomed to speed. They're not used to speed. They got little legs. They got little. Well, stocky they're always walking around legs. in low light and in the dark. And Plus, they're pretty built, so they're they're pretty top heavy. <coughs> so they got a lot to carry in the first place. Orphans can be created using any of the bloodlines that are known to populate that region. So it doesn't have to be a primary tribe, it can be one of the um, transition biomes. Question. Can Hurt. we commit genocide on an entire race? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Of course of you can. Of course. Of course. You can try. I mean, let the games begin. You can oh, try. God. Wow. <laughs> She's not even like, yeah, that's possible. That's She's just like, begin. let's see which tribe we can annihilate first. Wink, wink. I would assume so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we talked about that. And then even, they even exist in Naren society. I mean, in general, the, the Hrothi are more mountain-y, but the, 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 the montane steppe is still that. It's still a steppe. And so while they tend to build inside the tunnels because they appreciate the, the shelter and the more infinite nature of it, um, they're not opposed to going out and, and mingling with the the um, the Narens and the Broodvere. I mean, they will not, not the Kippic so much. But. There's some necessity to that as well, of course. Yeah. So they can't it, get all the resources from inside the mountains. Yeah, I, I would expect to see them in a lot of the steppe as well as um, you probably wouldn't see them as much in the alpine forest. But I would expect to see a, a good number of frothy inside the in the in the steppes inside yeah. the in the Naran environment, the grasslands. Yes, that's what that means. That was actually called out almost word for word inside the the write up. Uh, so the, the tribes are all focused on the biome that they're in. I mean, all the design of these are biome-based. And when you're in a biome that's largely made up of alpine forests, like uh, coniferous trees and things like that, you're looking at an area where you can't really grow a lot. Uh, you can cultivate animals through farming, but you still have to have something for them to eat. So you, you need to only work with animals that don't require a lot of grains and things like that. Uh, and you don't have the ability to grow fruits and vegetables. And so you're gonna spend a lot of your time hunting. And uh, you don't wanna hunt all the animals in a region to extinction. And so the amount of food in a region that would allow you to continue to, to grow as a culture uh, is limited. So as a result of that, they are going to be one of the more dispersed tribes uh, along with the Oum because there's just not a lot of food in a single location. That's based on the limitations of the biome itself through trade and through other endeavors and through research and technology, it becomes more possible. Right. So that's that's a, the limitations of the of the biome aside, there are ways for players who are Broodveer to, to build bigger settlements, sure. but it's gonna require a combination well, of player cooperation as well as technology and right, research. that's one of the challenges. That is a challenge. Like for like, the players to overcome. Right. right, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you for the next Q&A on, on Tribes Part Two. Uh, in the not too distant future, we want to make sure we keep these fairly close together so that we don't uh, lose momentum on them. We need to get them all done before the the domain and settlement selection. Yes. Right. So, and that's still coming up relatively soon. So we will be packing these in together as quickly as we can get the write-ups out to you guys. And other than that, I guess you guys enjoy the rest of your Thursday or Friday. Yeah. And we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks.